dreams play an important role in our lives. As many figures in the Bible are said to have been visited by God during their sleep. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. Welcome to Understanding Your Dreams, presented by Pastor Peter Kansembe from Praise Christian Center. This program has been tailor-made so that you can determine how much attention to pay to the meaning of your dreams. The dream is for the dreamer. Stay tuned. Welcome to Understanding Your Dreams. My name is Pastor Peter from Praise Christian Center. Once again, I bring to you greetings from our bishop, Dr. Edgar Ngambi. As usual, we start by reading from Proverbs chapter 33 and verse 14, which reads, For God may speak in one way or in another way, yet man does not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds. Then he opens the ears of men, seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deeds, to conceal pride from man, and to keep back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So the Lord speaks to us in many different ways. And one of the ways he speaks to us is through dreams. With dreams, he can reach anybody. With dreams, he has reached kings. With dreams, he has reached individuals. And uh, he has reached prophets and those who are not prophets. So it's one of the easier communication channels because when a man is asleep, his attention is uh, focused only on himself, and at that time, God can intervene, unlike during the day when you have all these other activities. So we start by acknowledging uh, the work that Christian Voice has been doing. We have received messages from South Africa, Botswana, Nigeria, Malaysia, UK, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Vic was down, and also Namibia. So we know that the program is going far and wide, and Radio Christian Voice is doing a great thing. So we look at dreams, we continue, and our focus, we look at healing, because there are times that there are questions, there are dreams, some dream they are being healed, especially for those that may not be well. Some see themselves in crusades, some see themselves uh, attending, uh, receiving treatment, and they are recovering. And so we just want to cover that portion, healing from Operation and God may speak to you in that uh, one way to inspire your faith. So I want to remind you as we begin that God is the great I am. The Lord is not the great I was or the great I will be. And then you remove one uh, part of it where it is God is the great I am. So Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't just say Jesus is the same yesterday and in the future, but he says today. So I encourage you to remember that God is the present God, an ever-present help in time of need. He tells Jeremiah, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and unsearchable things which you do not know. In Mark 11, he says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall receive them. So we know that God is an ever-present help in the time of need. And so we are going to relate some of those dreams to uh, issues of sickness or oppressions, just other oppressions. It may not be that somebody is seriously sick, but some have this type of dreams. In Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, here the scripture tells us, I am the Lord that heals you. Remember again, we are saying, it's not saying I am the Lord who healed you or who shall heal you. I am the Lord who heals. It's present. And so we know that God is a present help in time of need. In Psalm 107 verse 20, it says, He sent His word and healed their diseases. So we know that the word of God can be sent as you listen to the word of God on a Sunday or on a radio program. The word can come to you, inspire your faith. And as you believe in Romans 10, it tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that may be the word that you hold on to trusting God, standing upon it, and you see the Lord fulfilling that promise in your life. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, it says that how Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing 
all who were oppressed of the devil. So we know that healing is part and parcel of the package that Christ died for. He died, he took away your infirmities and diseases according to Matthew chapter 8, 14 to 16. So we know that healing is God's plan. Healing is God's will. Otherwise, if it was not God's will, Jesus would not have done it. Remember, Christ says that I do whatever I see my Father doing. Now, sometimes we have a tendency of changing our job description, but let us not change the job description. Let us keep it to what it is. So somebody may be employed as a driver. You see that you can't drive very well. You change your description to a waiter. That will not go well. So let's leave what God has said in the way it is and just trust him on his word. Just because I've not been successful on one thing does not change the way of God. So now God may give you a dream. And I've uh, received a number of questions, especially some have not been well. And they send in a dream and saying, I see myself waking. I've been bedridden. I see myself recovering. Now, remember that God can speak to you concerning your finances, encouraging you because things are not well financially. And he may send you a dream of hope to encourage you that this situation shall pass. And we easily accept those dreams because it is showing us a positive outcome. In the same way the Lord can show you coming out of such challenges, he can also show you the same when a person is challenged physically in terms of sickness. He may send you a dream that gives you hope and encouragement, inspiration to know that even this cloud, it shall pass. Because God desires, uh, like John says, I wish you above all things that you may prosper in health even as your soul prosper. So in the same way that God can send warnings about sicknesses, sometimes it is lifestyles that can cause sickness and disease. If you have a wrong lifestyle, God again can warn you in that lifestyle, that this lifestyle you are leading, it will bring um, a lot of challenges for you. So God can warn and God can also bring encouragement uh, for healing. So the Bible tells us that the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. That is in First Corinthians. So we know that the Spirit of God can search out your body and tell you that this issue, he will deal with it. He can know what is wrong in your body. There are many times that uh, a person might be sick, they, they, they go looking for answers, and that answer is not being found. There are times that many diagnoses can be done, but the answer is not known. But the scripture tells us God knows all things, even the deep things of God. So God can search out a mystery going on in your life and may bring it to you in a dream so that you have a direction to pray, a direction to stand on his word and to trust him. So God can communicate such a word in order to steer up your faith, to encourage you. Remember that dreams are not always supposed to be negative but they are also supposed to, to encourage us. So there are three things that remain in the Bible, faith, hope, and love. So a dream that gives you hope is a positive thing. So God can use uh, a dream to encourage you to create um, renewal of faith in you or inspiration. So like we said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So having such a positive dream, you are coming out of a, a challenge of a sickness. It is a good dream. Stand on the word of God, find the scriptures, trust God, he will come through for you. God, I know some can come out of our desires, it's possible, but then we will not limit God because we have a desire for healing that he cannot speak. So some dreams can come to address the other issues that we are all most concerned about, but on healing, we think that God can speak. I want to remember that God can speak on every matter. And I want to encourage you with some examples. Uh, some healings can be quick, instant, others can be slow, progressive. For example, the woman with the issue of blood. If you look at Luke chapter 8 and verse 44, she was instantly healed when she touched the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you look at the ten lepers, Jesus told them that, on you, go your way and show yourself to the priest. And as they were going in Luke 17, verse 20, 12, they were healed. So there are times that God can instantly heal. God can progressively heal. And there are times that a person can make a request and God will come in his own timing, like in the case of Lazarus. Now, as I say this, I also encourage you, keep on what you are doing. So there are others who are on medication. Keep on. Don't give up. Don't throw it up. 
because there are others who say i've been on this medication i keep on dreaming i'm recovering i keep on dreaming i'm getting healed i've been on it for a long time don't get discouraged go with the prescription the doctors have given you trust god he will make it good for you so if those are the dreams you have been having i encourage you keep on uh, pushing keep on trusting the lord they are positive uh, dreams so many some see themselves being healed if you remember dr luke or the one who has written the, the book of luke he was a doctor he accompanied paul on the missions so we know that even on the missions paul had a doctor accompanying him obviously there are times that he would be attended to so there's nothing to be ashamed about if you have to go to a doctor trust god he will work through him so paul i mean luke wrote the book of acts and also wrote the book of luke and he has given us those examples of healing so some see themselves being healed don't be discouraged now if you look at the woman in luke chapter 8 the bible says that she kept on saying kept on saying kept on saying only if i touch the helm of his garment i'll be healed and she touched and she was healed so there are some that have said i keep on dreaming i've recovered i've recovered keep on dreaming i've recovered from this sickness but i'm still down this woman kept on saying kept on saying and eventually she was healed so if that is your constant dream just hold on to the word of god trust the word of god god will make it good for you a dream that gives you hope is a positive dream so having said that i also want to give some examples that you are you can relate to i remember somebody said they they, they keep on dreaming a snake in their body and one of the things i asked them is in the part of your body do you experience pain for example or others, they have very funny dreams about parts of their body. It can be the leg, it can be the hand, uh, it can be the head, um, it can be anything. And you see that there is an affliction. Some people talk about dogs biting, and uh, we've talked about this in the other program. And you find that from the time they have that dream where a dog has bitten them, it's like they have this pain in the hand or a pain in the leg, or they are limping. So those can be types of infirmities or afflictions, spiritual, that come. But then we know that if you have seen it, then you have the power and the authority according to the word of God. Luke 10, 17 to 19, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. So some dreams may expose what the enemy is doing in your blood, in your body so you can arise Pray, come against it in the name of Jesus, and the healing will come. I remember that when you pray for such people, usually they have relief. Some have said, I could not move my body in this particular way. But after breaking the power of the serpent, somebody said, now I can move freely. My back can, remove, can move freely. Others have different experiences because some of the infirmities, they are not natural. It's not something that you can explain like I drank uh, uh, contaminated water and I'm sick but some people have these encounters in the dream somebody also talked about they always dream themselves walking in graveyards and uh, when we started praying they talked about their legs being full of pain uh, and so after prayer their legs were healed delivered the pain was gone they were fine because some of these are spirits of infirmities and I'll show you from the scripture so some of these dreams when you are seeing them dreams of affliction don't just wake up and forget about them you need to pray you need to deal with them jesus christ has given you authority in colossians 2 14 to 16 he says he disarmed the powers and the principalities at the cross making a public spectacle of them so the enemy is disarmed the authority is in your hands christ has given you or authority so they are these type of dreams uh, as an example so again when you pray you discover that when that power is broken um, healing comes it's like that woman who came in the in the synagogue when jesus was teaching she was bent over for for 18 years and jesus cast out a spirit and her back stretched so you can see that she had a physical situation from the eyes of man you can explain it but then it was a spirit of infirmity that was causing her to be bent over and when christ cast it out healing came in her body so things are not always the way they are so if you have those dreams you are being healed or some you are being afflicted you need to stand on the word of god take authority and deal with uh, these things some people say they dream they are carrying heavy loads 
Others talk about dreaming they are carrying heavy children or children they don't know. And they always talk about backaches or sometimes they talk about being weary, being fatigued, being tired. It's like a person wakes up in the morning and they are already feeling sick or depressed or tired simply from the dreams that they have. Those could be spirits of infirmity that come to afflict. So if you are having those dreams, again, I encourage you, by his stripes, you were healed in Christ. So you can stand on the word of God, pray, declare what God has done in your life, and see the Lord bring healing in your body. Now, I'll read a scripture just to add on so that you are not seeing that we are just using words, because some talk about being chased by strangers. Somebody talked about being whipped. They were sleeping, and strangers were whipping them, and from that time they were whipped. They, they, they were feeling sick all over their body from a dream. So some of those things are spiritual attacks, but then there is a promise of healing because he overcame and you can overcome. And so that's why we are looking at healing from oppression in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 9, verse 37 to 42, the Bible reads, Now it happened the next day when they had come down from the mountain that a great multitude met him. Suddenly a man from the multitude cried, Teacher, I implore you, look on my son, for he is my only child. And behold, a spirit seizes him, and suddenly he cries out. It convulses so that he forms at his mouth, and then it departs from him with great difficulty and bruising. The other, in the other books, he says it throws him in the fire. So this was a spirit of torment and uh, uh, infirmity. So there are others that see themselves tormented in the night tortured in the night by things that they don't know. But then you can see that Christ died, paid the price for your freedom. So healing can come when you look at the word of God and trust in the word of God. In Mark chapter 5, other people dream they are always uh, in a place of confusion. Others, they dream they are not seeing where they are going. They are in a place of restlessness. Some people see themselves in dark rooms. Now, if you look at Mark chapter 5, you remember the story of the man when Jesus crossed over the lake, came to the Gasserines. He met a madman, a man that had a legion of demons. Some say a legion is 12,000, others say six. But whatever the number is, there were thousands of demons that this man had. And when this man came to Jesus, the, the legion of demons could not stop him from worshipping the Lord no no matter the number, he came and bowed down, worshipped the Christ. He was delivered and his mind was set free. So some see confusion in their night. So you have there again, you see that Christ delivered a man from that confusion. If that is your dream, again, you can stand on the word of God, pray about it, trusting God to break. Now, I'm not saying every confusion is as a result of a demonic oppression. There are confusions that come because of imbalances in the body, other sicknesses, some are hereditary, but in, in, in this case, whatever the situation is, we know Christ has authority. But if it is this, where you are seeing confusions, torments, uh, afflictions, being beaten in the night by strangers like somebody sent in a dream, you can stand on the word of God because you know those are oppressions that are bringing sickness and affliction in your body. Some see themselves in dark rooms, and they are oppressed. The spirit of depression can be on somebody. It can attach itself because somebody has gone through very challenging things in their lives, so they've been stressed. So you can see that even in that case, the dream can show you what is going on, and God can bring you freedom and deliverance because that is what his ultimate uh, aim is. So there are spirits that come to create a wrong atmosphere. And so like I was saying, others dream, animals are chasing them, being beaten. Some where they see they are beaten, they say, I have abdominal pains. Now some of these pains, they are, they are connected sometimes to things like shame, sometimes fear. There are people who are so fearful in their lives that because of fear, they experience pains in their body, especially in the spine, some in the stomach. So you could find that the fear that they have uh, it's just as a result of, uh, the, uh, I mean, the pain that they have is as a result of the pain. Even medical science has shown that when a person is stressed, fearful, certain things can start growing in their body just because of the fear and the oppression that is in them. 
when they come out of that oppression, they come into the place of joy, you find that the deterioration in the body stops just because of a change of environment. So some, you discover they have very serious pains, but when they are delivered from the spirit of fear, a healing comes in your body. So sometimes you need to look at what really troubles you, what really oppresses you, what torments you in the night. Some of these torments come from the experiences of life. And then there is also a spirit of shame. Some people see themselves naked. This is a common dream. It's people seeing themselves naked in the public, they feel humiliated. And because of that dream, you find that uh, certain things do not work well in their lives. So again, that can begin to affect how uh, the health of a person is because if a person is always depressed, sorrowful, shameful, even your immune system, begins to respond according to the way your heart is feeling. So Jesus came to deliver and to set free. So in Isaiah chapter 61, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach uh, good news. He has sent me to, to, to open the prisons for them that are bound. So like we are saying, there are these type of dreams that can come and they are also related to affliction. They are, it has become common in the last few weeks, a number of people have been saying they are saved with feces. And uh, when they are saved with that, some they wake up and they feel sick because obviously if you drank that, even science tells you if your water is polluted with fecal matter, you, you may get sick, you may get cholera. So that's an example in the natural. So if you see yourself being saved with fecal matter, you know that the enemy is trying to poison your health. And there are some that have had this experience Is the enemy casting your work, you, your health? You need to arise and pray because you have authority in the name of Jesus. And so, one of the things that we'll do uh, as we are winding up on time, I will, we will just pray tonight so that we just don't leave it hanging. I'll just give you a few pointers that you can do as we are on air. Number one, you identify the area that you have been seeing this type of affliction, whichever we have spoken about, or even if I've not spoken about it. Uh, bring it to the attention of the Lord, then there are issues that have to do with forgiveness and unforgiveness. If there are people you need to forgive, you need to release them because some sicknesses stick around because of bitterness. And then when you forgive, you are going to renounce that condition and submit it to the feet of Christ. And when the Lord heals you, share a testimony, text on the page, or send a message to say, the Lord has delivered me. So in the minute that we have, we are going to pray in the name of Jesus so that we don't leave you hanging. So I'll lead you in a prayer. The first thing is to cast your care upon the Lord. So you are going to pray in your own style, but in this way you say, Lord, I cast my care, my anxiety or affliction upon your feet tonight, and I bring to you every tormenting dream that has brought sickness upon me. That is your first prayer point. The next prayer point, I choose to forgive and to release every person that has wounded me. Wherever I'm keeping bitterness tonight, I'm letting go of them. And then thirdly, I renounce this oppression. Whether it's a snake moving in your body or a dog bite, and from there you've been experiencing sickness, I renounce it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the same way that you receive Christ, you are going to pray and say, Lord, I receive your healing. I receive the provision that Christ has given for me at the cross of Calvary because he purchased it, he paid for it, and by his stripes I was healed. And with those prayer points now we'll pray for you, with you in a few minutes, and as the Lord touches you, share your testimony in Jesus' name. So Father, tonight we thank you for the power and authority in the name of Jesus. We bring every issue presented to you by your children in Jesus' name. And Lord, we take authority over every affliction that has come through spirits of torments or various oppressions. Take authority over bitterness and unforgiveness. We say tonight, release your power and release your presence. Deliver any person who needs to be delivered from a spiritual oppression in the name of Jesus Christ. I command and I declare that your light will shine through their eyes, through their ears, through their bodies. And Lord, wherever there is pain in their body tonight, 
We command the healing of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we honor you for your intervention. We thank you for your freedom in all the things that we've covered tonight. So, until the next time, this is Peter Kansembe from Praise Christian Center. You may like my page on Facebook, Peter Kansembe Understanding Dreams, or you may send in your questions by text or WhatsApp to 0961 500512, 0961-500512, and we'll be more than glad to assist you. Until the next time, shalom. You have been listening to Understanding Your Dreams.